Welcome back to another episode of What to Do Around MU. This week we're going to be talking about a place called Escape the Puzzle Room in West Long Branch, New Jersey. It's about a five minute drive from Monmouth University. If you go to the library and head north down Norwood and make a right when you get to the end of the street, the escape room will be on your left. For those of you who don't know what an escape room is, it is basically a scavenger hunt mixed with a bunch of puzzles. You have to find keys, combinations, and solve puzzles in order to get out of the room in under 60 minutes. The owners of the escape room are Tina and Gabe. Tina is the brains behind the entire operation. She goes and creates all the different rooms by hand, uh, makes everything from scratch, from the uh, combinations to the different clues, and even the backstory behind everything. Gabe has a cool mustache, and he considers himself to be the beauty behind the entire operation, so everyone lets him have that. I actually work there, and I am one of the game masters, so I'm the one who will read everybody in, tell you what to do, what not to do, get everybody into the room, and then I also am the one who's typing out the clues behind everything. So we have all these cameras inside, and I'm watching as everybody goes through. I'm giving clues to try and help everybody get in and out in under 60 minutes. So the rooms are about $32 a person, but if you mention my name, you might get a little bit of a discount. Kind of a big deal over there. So right now there are about six rooms there uh, with more coming along the way. We've got one planned for December, which is going to be a Christmas themed one. Another room on the second floor, which is going to be kind of tied in with one of the themed rooms, Three Keys. So Three Keys is the newest room that we have. Tina just finished that up I think about a month or two ago from when I'm making this video right now. And that one is one of the smaller sized rooms, so you can go in there with about six people. And I think it's probably the hardest room that we have right now. It is not an easy room to go through. The objective of the room is to break into the inventor's workshop that you've been working for. Get the money that you are owed and get out in under 60 minutes before he comes back. This is a steampunk themed room with a bunch of metal and kind of artsy stuff on the walls. It has to do with metal crafting and this one there's not too much physical stuff that you have to do so it's a lot of feeling around with your hands, trying to decipher clues in different ways and looking at different perspectives. So it's definitely a lot of fun but it is on the harder side so if you want a challenge definitely check out Three Keys. The next room that I'm going to talk about is called Animal Kingdom which is meant for more of smaller groups, probably around two to uh, two to six, but it, this is more of our date night room or you're there going with a friend or two. The backstory to this room is that there are five animals that were gathered and delivered in a caravan, but only one of them survived the trip. So you have to go through the room, figure out which is the one that survived in order to gain the secret to immortality. This room is really cool aesthetically because it's got a bunch of different props based around animals. There are clues hidden everywhere, up high, down low, and it is just a blast to go through. There's a big team aspect in this room, so you're going to want to pick someone who you work well with, otherwise you're going to get very irritated with them, and it's going to be fun for me to watch you guys go through the room. Tower is another one of our tough rooms that we have. This is located on the third floor, and this is another smaller group room. I help paint some of the things inside the rooms and set up some of the cameras, so kudos to me for that. So the objective of this room is to return the box that you were sent in the mail to this tower where your uncle mysteriously passed away. And you have to get in, return the box, and get out before sunset. Otherwise, you may meet the same fate as your uncle. This is more of a gothic themed room, and it's got gargoyles, a bunch of different lighting effects on the inside. This is definitely a more clue-based room where you have to really look at the things that you get from the different puzzles and put them all together in order to get out in time. Like I said, I think this is probably our second hardest game, second or third hardest game, but it is a lot of fun to go through. Next game I'm going to talk about is Carnival, which is my second favorite game. Obviously from the name of it, it is Carnival themed. This is one of our bigger rooms, so it's better to go with a couple friends. On the website it says it's two to eight players, but I definitely go for more people rather than less because there's a lot of different puzzles that need to be attacked to get it out in time. I really like this room because it's got a bunch of different ways in which you do play the game. There's a lot of physical aspects to it. It's more than just looking at different pieces of a puzzle. You really have to use your hands along with using your head in this one in order to get out in time. I think the puzzles are really cool in this one and they match the carnival theme perfectly. And it's just really cool to have this little carnival inside of this building, which is a, kind of a surprise when you walk in. The next room I want to talk about is Swamp, and this one is my favorite one because I get to pretend like I'm Shrek as I'm running the game. Okay, that's not true, but it's still one of the coolest looking rooms aesthetically that we have. It's incredible how Tina turned this room into a shack that is in the swamps of Louisiana. 
In Swamp, a curse has been placed on you by the evil witch doctor, Baron Sandy, and you have to go into his shack, which is located in one of the swamps down in Louisiana, in order to lift the curse and escape before he returns. This one's really fun for me to run because there are so many different ways that you can attack the puzzles within the room and it's fun to see the thought process that each person has. Having a very diverse group is definitely going to help you here because there's a need for different perspectives in order to solve some of the puzzles. The last room I want to highlight is Speakeasy. This is a good one to do if you have never done an escape room before. It's a pretty good introduction to what escape rooms are all about and it's not as hard as the other ones are. It can be done with either a small group or a bigger size group, and it's just a lot of fun to go through. This one, there's also several different physical aspects that you can do. You gotta just, instead of walking around, you have to kind of get on the floor, look around, and use different perspectives to seek out clues. The premise behind this room is that your name has been put on a hit list, and there's a hitman out to collect the bounty that's on your head. The hit list has been delivered to Tallulah Darling's Short Club, and you have to get into the club, find the hit list, and get out before your fate is sealed. This one is a 1920s themed room back in the days of prohibition. The music that we have for this room is very old timey and it feels like you stepped back into the 20s once you step into this room which is really cool. Overall all these games are a blast because everything is made by hand and it's really cool to look at as you're going through and it makes you use different perspectives. It makes you think differently in order to get out and under the time limit that they have set. That's it for this week of what to do around MU and I hope you tune in next week.